What's up, everybody? Welcome back for another episode of the FanCast Live podcast. My name is John Carlo. I'm your host. I got my boy Jamie Hollywood Barrett with me today. We're going to be talking some New York Giants and previewing the 2022 season. I want to remind our listeners that you can listen to the FanCast Live podcast on any podcast platform you desire, whether it's Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. Uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, just make sure you hit that subscribe button and follow the show and uh, hit that notification button so you get notified whenever a new video like this or a new podcast is up. Uh, so, Jamie, welcome back. Good to see you, brother. We're going to be talking a lot of New York Giants today. You ready for this? I'm ready, man. It's it's The season is finally here. Uh, I got a lot of a lot of uncertainty, but that's par for the course for us. So we got to get after it again. Yeah, I, I'm, my feeling is it's going to be another long fucking season. But you know what? Yeah. This is why we're here, and this is why we're going to chat about it. <laughs> All right, so why don't we just uh, go ahead and start with Daniel Jones? Because obviously he and Barkley, what, are the, are the longest tenured players on this roster right now? Am yeah, I, probably. I, right? she- I would say Shepard is maybe a little more tenured because he came in with Odell, yeah, but that's he's right. the I only even, one. I didn't even think about him. Yeah, he's never around. I mean, it's, those, it's, those are the two guys. Those are the key, key components in the offense this year. Obviously, D- Daniel Jones uh, in his, what, fourth year going in now, right? Fourth, fourth year. year. 2019, 2020, 2021. This is his fourth year. The Giants didn't pick up his fifth year option. So this is make it or break it for Daniel Jones. This is a guy who's got an overall record of 12, 12 and 26. He's uh, he's thrown for 8,398 yards, 45 touchdowns, 29 interceptions. We all know about the 36 fumbles and the 20 lost. Um, you know, he's <laughs> he's been... His I think his rookie year is still the best uh, best of his career so far. He had a what yep. eighty seven point seven QB rating that year. That's still the best out of the three seasons that he's played. Um, new system. This is a new head coach. This is what his third head coach, third new offensive system, the third offensive coordinator. I think it is too, right? Yeah. It's a lot of turnover. It's similar to what you see from Sam Darnold. I mean, if you have that much turnover, it's it's hard to it's hard to be successful. Yeah, I mean, listen, what what are your expectations out of Daniel Jones first and foremost? Let's let's start with that. Well, um, we we don't want to make the mistake of being overly optimistic going into a giant season. Um, We've made that mistake before. I will say this. The Giants do have an easier schedule. Um, one of the easier schedules in the league. So that that should help, at least from a confidence standpoint. There's no killers in the division. I mean, Washington is not great with their quarterback situation is in flux. Good defense. Uh, but they're certainly not a world beater. Dallas, a lot of questions there. A lot of depth issues with their offensive line. Their defense has a couple of stars, but nobody that's going to kill you. And then the Eagles are a loaded roster, but with an unproven quarterback and the way he plays, we don't know if he's going to take them anywhere. So the Giants beat the Eagles last year too. So I believe that with the division they're in and the schedule they have, I would expect a more confident Daniel Jones. Um, This is up to him. He this is really, he's playing for his career. You know, he's going to be playing for his next paycheck. He's going to be playing for staying power in the league. Um, he, w- one thing he can't do is he can't get himself hurt by trying to dive in uh, on the goal line, taking on two linebackers and that can't happen. So you hope to see some maturity. Uh, I think he's capable of maturity. I think there's a lot of athleticism there to take advantage of. I think, you know, Brian Dable, what he was able to do with that offense, and Josh Allen, who was a good quarterback with some promise to make him elite. Now, Jones is a quarterback that's okay. Can we make him a really good quarterback? I think it's possible. So so I think there is possibility for improvement with Daniel uh, because the offensive line has been totally revamped. And I think that with a Andrew Thomas back and ready for another year, you bring in the first round pick, Evan Neal, you bring in some other competent offensive linemen. Again, we're not talking a top 10, but 
certainly better than before. So I would expect a better, more efficient Daniel Jones in terms of numbers. I got to see it to believe it. I, I don't know. That's going to be a little bit tough to predict. What about you? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I we've we've spoken about Daniel Jones so many times, Jamie, and we've both been uh, very positive in regard to Daniel Jones. We've always thought that he was going to become the quarterback we all expected him to become, and he hasn't done that. But in fairness, three head coaches, three different offensive systems. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of learning going on there. It's unfortunate for Daniel Jones. It sucks for him because now he's in a situation where his fifth year isn't being picked up. He's now got to learn uh, a new system, and he's sort of like a sitting duck. If he, he doesn't succeed, there's a good chance he might not play as a starting quarterback in this league. He might have a backup role somewhere, but it, it, it might not be a starting position. But yeah. um, I, um, I don't have that confidence that I had maybe – after his rookie year, yeah, maybe his second season, I just don't have that confidence. It seems to me um, that it's pretty clear that the Giants are probably going to move on from Daniel Jones at season's end, regardless of whether he has a good season or not. If he has a good season, that's good for him because maybe he can move on and yeah. continue his career elsewhere. But it's probably, regardless of what he does, it's not going to be with the New York Giants. Yeah, and, and look, I mean, Shane and Dable were – they know what elite quarterback looks like up close and personal. Dable's ran an offense called plays for a prolific offense um, that was built around the quarterback and his skills. So he's going to put Daniel in a position to be successful. Whether or not he can be successful with the pieces around him, that's – you know, there's a lot of inherited parts like Kenny Galladay. It's – he's a broken down vehicle at this point, and, you know, he – there's there's just a lot of uncertainty with injuries, the wide receiver group not being on the same page. You have a running back who's hurt a lot. The way that Daniel Jones plays, um, you know, he's going to lend itself to get injuries. You really hope the best for him. Um, but I would agree with you. I mean, you know, there's a reason Joe Shane is at Ohio State the other day. He, he's looking at C.J. Stroud. They're, they're looking at other quarterbacks from the future. But you know what? Like, Daniel Jones has a lot to play for, and – he seems like a kid that's got a lot of pride and he works really, really hard and he's well-respected in the room, named captain again. And that wasn't by the coaches, that was by the players. So that, that tells you a lot about, about his character and, you know, kind of his demeanor. So hoping for the best. Um, <laughs> it's really all you can do at this point. But uh, I, I, I would have to say better than last year. Can't be any worse than last year. Well, let's stay with the offense and move on to Saquon Barkley. He's a guy, once again, like Daniel Jones, who hasn't been able to stay on the field. Um, obviously, his injuries are far more uh, worse than Daniel Jones's. Uh, we know that Daniel Jones missed his last few starts last year because of the, the neck injury. We know that uh, Saquon Barkley lost a, a significant amount of time because of his ACL. Um, what are your expectations of Saquon Barkley? I mean, he's looked terrific in 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 preseason. He's looked good in camp. Um, he, he looks like he lost some weight. Uh, he gained some more muscle. Uh, he looks in pretty good shape. But he's another yeah. one of those players that I think you know, come the end of the year, regardless of what how good or how bad he does, he's another guy. I think the Giants are going to target. Uh, you know, to you know, let go. Yeah, I, I, I love Saquon. I mean, he is a elite talent, um, explosive. Um, you, you, I only want to see him be successful. He's a good person. But uh, I, I think running backs are, are, are not what they used to be. Even 10 years ago, you know, you had guys like Frank Gore and, and you know, Sean Alexander. These, you don't see running backs 25 carries, 125 yards on the stat line on Sunday thick. You don't see it. You get you. It's going to be a split running back by committee. So Saquon Barkley, if he can get a couple of creases and be confident running north south, I think he could have a big year. Um, what's hurt Saquon in the past is like w with all these running backs, Todd Gurley, his career ended short. Zeke Elliott, you see it now. It's it's the injuries. Um, but I think with this system, and I think Saquon is very underrated as a pass catcher. Caught ninety one passes uh, a few years ago. He is. 
just as good as anybody receiving out of the backfield. So I'd like to see Daniel Jones use him a lot in the passing game. I'd like to see him kind of go in and do option routes, especially if we are thin at wide out. So I think they're going to use him a lot. They saved him preseason. They didn't want him to get you know, any chances of banged up. Looks really healthy. So I think Saquon Barkley is going to have a very good season. Um, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, as good as some of these new guys that are coming in, but I, I, if he's healthy, he's going to be very, very productive. I think he's going to be a very big part of this offense and, and certainly put the ball in the end zone and certainly break off some big runs. Uh, you'll definitely know if there's going to be any hesitations, uh, at the line, but, uh, you know, even if he has a great year, I mean, this will be probably his last season because he's going to, you know, want a lot of money. And we're just not in position with our cap space the way it is, as you know, to, to make these type of commitments. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Dave. But I think Gettleman. he's going to have a good year. Yeah, I know. That was. So, um, I, I mean, I, I think that Saquon Barkley is going to have a good season. Daniel Jones could potentially have a good season. But their success is obviously going to rely on how good or how bad the offensive line is. Sure. This offensive line it was something that Dave Gettleman was supposed to rebuild, and he never did it. Uh, he drafted, um, what's his face? Matt Pert, Shane Lemieux, Shane Lemieux. Um, a bunch of uh, a bunch of other guys that just never. He picked up Andrew Thomas, who he's actually developing well now. Well, he's going to be but, a starting left tackle. Neil's going to be at the yeah. right tackle. They brought in some free agents. Those are probably the biggest free agents they signed all season because, quite honestly. Um, all the the turnover on it on this on this roster, it came from mostly the the uh, the draft. I mean, yep. they they took Evan Neal, they took uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, they took yep. Wondell Robinson. Those are the three key guys at the top. You know, three picks of this year's draft. I mean, what other free agents have we signed that were you know key free agents? I mean, the guys uh, that we signed for the out offensive line, you know. Are, key veterans that uh you know have experience and that's the reason why they're here yeah we were priced out of any prime time free agents i mean gettleman had an empty checkbook and threw a lot of money around and we saw how that's turned out so unfortunately we didn't have a lot of money to maybe pick up an aj brown uh or you know pick up you know uh someone that could really move the needle offensively or defensively but i think joe shane was pretty smart he went to the well made some phone calls and he brings in uh you know, I'm looking here, John Feliciano, that he, he had a stint there with, with Buffalo. And um, there's some other guys too, Max Garcia, veteran guys that have had very successful seasons, but maybe a few years ago. So it's a patchwork offensive line, but they are veterans that know what they're doing. Um, instead of developing a lot of these third round guys, Shane Lemieux, Nick Gates, uh, Matt Pert, who never, who is, I don't know if he's in the league. So I, I think there was a glaring uh, deficiency that this regime came in and they addressed it as best as they could. And through the draft, you know, we got lucky that we traded down to get Justin Fields last year because that cave on Thibodeau pick is going to be huge dividends. I do think and we'll get to the defensive side too. I think he's got a chance to be a very, very uh, impactful player for us. So, you know, offensive line is going to be, don't have a lot of depth, but you know, it, it, there's no way, there's no way it can be any worse than it's been. It's impossible. How many wins did the Giants have last year, Jamie? I think they were 4-13. and 13. You think they're going to get more than four wins this year? I do. You think I there's do. a possibility they do? Yes, hmm. I do. Their schedule hmm. is very is, – is so the NFC East has the easiest schedule in football. Um I, I will. So their first game is against Tennessee. We can go through all the games. That's a that's a tough game. I don't see a huge home field advantage for Tennessee. A lot of New Yorkers do the bachelor party things. I've been there. It's great. So I don't think that's a big home field advantage. And I don't love their quarterback either. But they, but you got the Panthers, Bears, Jaguars, Seahawks, Texans, Lions, um, command. You know, I got the Commanders twice. So there are winnable games out there to be had, you know? They're and, winnable games, but you also have to understand that these are all teams that are rebuilding just like the Giants are. So true. They're, they're, we might not be familiar with their talent on paper, but right. 
you know, what what exactly is that talent going to look like on the field? I mean, I don't, sure. I don't know crap about the, you know, the Panthers or the Bears or any. I mean, yeah. I, I might name a few players on these teams, but the fact of the matter is, is these teams are, are building just like the Giants are. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they may or may not be as talented as the Giants are. Uh, yeah, but still, I mean, you st- the Giants still have to go out there and perform and execute. Sure. Uh, Daniel Jones has to stay healthy. Barkley has to stay healthy. The offensive line has to do their part. The receivers have to stay on the field because we all know, uh, you know, the number of injuries they've had at the wide receiver core with these New York Giants players: uh, Shepard, Galladay, uh, d- d- uh, Tony. Tony. I, I mean, you name it. I mean, these guys have never been on the field all at one time to contribute at the same time. It's always been one is out, We've two been are out. And snake it's just, bit for years. Yeah, it's that. been like that. It's been like you that can for even, the last few years now. You can even go back to Odell Beckham and Victor Cruz just never being on the same pay, on the same time. It's it's exactly. just been so rough. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it's crazy. This is, I'm not going off topic here, but the, you know, the turf uh, I think is an issue too. Uh, it, it, there's way too many more injuries with a lot of these turf fields discussion for another day. When I look at who we play, I typically look for two things, quarterback and coach combination, what their status is. Cause that is going to be 50% of the battle right there. You already know you're playing the Packers. You're not going to win. You have Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur. They, they can call the plays in their sleep, losing Devontae Adams. They're still going to win a lot of games and make the playoffs. You already know that. Seattle, we don't know who their quarterback is. Like Geno Smith, Drew Locke, eh, that's not good. You know, like the, there is a tough situation there. Jaguars, they got Trevor Lawrence, but young team. Bears, Justin Fields, talent depleted team. Panthers, Baker Mayfield, you know, in his fourth new coach in the last four years. Uh, and then Tannehill, you don't love Jared Goff on the Lions. Uh, you don't love Carson Wentz really on the Commanders. Uh, you know, do you love Kirk Cousins? Not really. Do you love Jalen Hurts? That roster is good. So there's just a lot of room. I think this defense is going to have a impactful year. We are thin at corner, but I do love uh, who we got up front. I love Leo uh, and Dax and our pass rushers. Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon is going to have a big impact. You lose Blake. But there's going to be a lot of moving parts in that defense, and I think they're going to be competitive enough. I'm going to probably say like six, seven games. Uh, I'll probably leave it at that. But there's games to be won here, barring Jones isn't hurt and there's no unforeseen, you know, injury like that. Who was the biggest surprise when they cut down 53 uh, when was it a week ago or so? A yeah. million a week ago. What was the biggest surprise for you as far as roster cuts? Gotta be Blake Martinez. And we talked about that too. I mean, they they restructured his contract to not have the cap hit as much this year. So you're only saving a million and change. This guy led the Green Bay Packers in tackles three years in a row, made Pro Bowls, was our defensive signal call last year. What I heard is that now Wink, he likes the secondary. So Xavier McKinney, very talented, you know, from, from Alabama, he's going to call the play, call the signal. So I think Blake is just, was just not comfortable from what it sounded like in the system, but to not keep him around. I mean, you need people to make tackles. That's not something that we were particularly doing well in as a defense last year. So that's got to be the most surprising. That was the most surprising for me, but the way the Giants sold it is, you know, it it was a a cap situation. They they, they yeah, wanted to get. That. They were still over the cap. They needed to get under the cap. They restructured Leonard Williams' contract uh, just yesterday, I believe, to to get under the cap. They were still over the cap. It's just, um, I I mean, Dave Gettleman. I mean, he he did a l- far worse <laughs> than we thought he did. Uh, I mean, we we gave him kudos for a lot of the draft picks that he brought in, and in a, in a couple of years that he was with the New York Giants in the front office. But yeah. oh, man, the money he threw at Kenny Galladay, uh, the money that he Logan threw around. Ryan, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you you can just keep naming Nate names. Nate Solder. Solder was uh, like one of the worst. Yeah, and, it's just at every position. Yeah, and and now you think about it, and you you got this new regime, this new head coach, and 
cut after cut after cut, cap space, cap space, cap space, cap space. It's like, yo, what yeah. the fuck was this guy doing? And he like, reached for draft picks. As we love Saquon out of the draft, so we, I can't speak ill of. I just love the kid to death. I, uh, you know, but that you're drafting a run, you're never going to see. Giants basically was a cautionary tale for the rest of the league. You can't draft a running back top fifteen ever again. I mean, it's it's insane. And then. Daniel Jones, you know, there's a lot, next year Giants have a lot of, you know, there's a lot of quarterbacks out there, Justin Herbert and and a lot of other guys. So, listen, I mean, you, you, when you swing and miss for a quarterback, sets your franchise back, there's no way you can win and you know, you compound that with some bad hires. You know what it is though? Uh, I think John Mara this time around physically removed himself from a lot of the decision-making process and is delegating that to Joe Shane now. So that I, I would, I would give him kudos for, but Gettleman, I mean, he, he left the tornado. It was, it's just bad all the way around. There's really not much we can do uh, to repair some of these things. Like I said before, I mean, the most, the most impactful players the Giants brought in were through the draft it wasn't necessarily through free agency, so it goes to show you the damage that Dave Gettleman did uh, with the cap. Um, so, I, I mean, listen, we already said it. Daniel Jones most likely will not be here next year. Saquon Barkley will most likely not be here next year. That's money that the Giants are going to have on the table to spend elsewhere to improve in other parts of this team. And when yeah. Blake Martinez was released... I was heartbroken because I, I felt he was the heart and soul of this New York Giants defense. Granted, he was out last year with that injury, but I thought that he was going to come back and he was going to lead this defense once again. And yeah. even though he was making all the money that he was making, I just felt that the Giants were going to keep him around. And unfortunately, that it wasn't the case. So that was my biggest surprise. But I understand where Joe Shane is coming from. I, I can see. But... Like you said, how much money did we really save by letting go of, of Blake Martinez? Yeah, uh, it, point, like a million seven, and change. Yeah, it's not dollars. a lot. It's not a lot. So it wasn't it's really a system a play. I think Blake wanted to leave too. I mean, Wink is different than, you know, Patrick Graham. And, and I really like Patrick Graham. I think he's going to do a great job in Vegas. I thought it was a very good – the players did not quit on Patrick Graham, although the last couple of efforts were – I think everybody kind of just fell apart. Um. But Wink, uh, he likes Wink's guys. And he, you know, he has his system and he, you know, he plays with, you know, he has a lot of very impactful secondary players that move around a lot and can can do a lot of things. So uh, I think he's going to give a lot of the leadership and signal calling to Xavier McKinney. He loves Julian Love. He loves Darnay Holmes. He loves some of these guys that didn't get a ton of playing time, maybe special teams. And he's going to elevate those guys to bigger roles you're going to see a lot of blitzing from the safety, a lot of blitzing from core. You're going to see a lot of blitzing from a lot of different areas, a little more high risk, high reward type of plays. Um, and I think that he's going to count on our pass rushers to get home. So Blake Martinez is a traditional Brian Erlacher, old school middle linebacker, shoots the gap when he needs to, but you know, he, he's a tackler in, in space and, he needs more running. He needs more lateral side to side movement probably with his linebackers and he needs guys that can drop back in coverage. And Blake is, that's not his thing. And Blake's 28 years old and he probably wants to get a ring, you know, and uh, he sees the writing on the wall. He probably told, you know, wink and the guys, listen, I mean, you know, I love the giants. I want to play, but I want to have this type of role. And I didn't think there was any disrespect there. I, I can't really fault him for it. He's going to find work. I mean, he's, He's a tackling machine, and he's a, he's a really, really good football player. So, But it just shows you that this is a new regime that's not holding on too long to things. In years past, you would see Giants like just hold on to guys a little too long. They'd overreach for guys. I just think this, this regime is a different approach, so I do respect that also. You know, I would if, – if Joe Shane and Dable kept him because – they felt they needed him and he wasn't happy. I mean, what does that do for someone else's playing time? You know, what, how does that, you know, he, he wasn't voted captain. That, that was a tell that, you know, maybe there was, cause he was the undisputed captain when he was playing and he didn't get voted. So he maybe wasn't engaged on the field, you know, and, and, and what they were trying to do. 
So, I mean, this defense looks pretty solid. I mean, you got Dexter Lawrence coming back. You got Leonard Williams coming back. Azizo Zulari, who had a really good rookie season, is coming back. You add Kayvon Thibodeau through the draft. We feel he's going to have a tremendous season. We think he's going to have a tremendous yeah. career here with the New York Giants. We finally get, you know, that end rusher that uh, we, we were, you know, we were seeking the last few years. Tate Crowder is coming back, obviously, to be the middle linebacker. Uh, I mean, he was a tackling machine last year. I, I mean, I don't, I'm not too too high on Tate Crowder. Uh, I would have rather had, you know, Blake Martinez there. Yeah. This, this, this one particular person, Austin uh, Calitro. Calitro? I yeah. Don't know anything about him. Didn't really follow him during, uh, you know, the, during camp or, um, you know, preseason. What are your thoughts on this guy? Do you know anything about him? Yeah, I do. It's actually interesting you brought him up because he's from Danbury, Connecticut. And no sure. I, so I know mutual friends that I work with uh, in Connecticut that do know him personally. Um, and they're always rooting for him. So I do kind of, I've heard a lot about him and um, he made some big plays. Um, you know, he's been on a lot of practice squads. He's probably going to be on the practice squad. He might see some game. He might see some special teams. He might see some time. I don't know if he's going to be like, an, you know, a guy that you can count on, you know, all the time. But you know, the fact that he is here, um, he's hungry. I think Wink wants guys that are hungry that can try to make an impact. So I'd love to see him on special teams, and if he can get a few snaps in uh, in a game, that'd be great too. I, I don't know how much we should expect from him, but it's certainly a feel good story and. Uh, Definitely love the energy and the passion. You can certainly use it. Aaron Robinson has been the big talk of the Giants defense because of his inability to cover downfield. He's been beat on many big plays, and yeah, he is that. the Giants, one of the Giants starting cornerbacks. How do you feel about that? I, I'm not too confident I'm with this it. kid, but I mean – if, if, is yeah. there anybody else on this roster that you would rather see starting at cornerback than Aaron Robinson? It's hard to say because, um, you know, you have – you drafted a kid in the fifth round flop from LSU, athletic player, but, you know, he's – I don't think he's a, the answer. You know, Julian Love um, – voted team captain. I think he's more of a guy that's going to be in blitz packages and open field tackles. Mm -hmm. Darnay Holmes uh, is more of a slot corner with his elite speed and, and, and managing those quick twitchy guys. I don't know if he's a guy you can put on an Island uh, against like a six foot four receiver and even a Dory Jackson. I mean, he's not like a certified number one. I mean, he's not James Bradbury. So Again, we're in a position where we're going to have to get home with our pass rushers. We haven't done that the last few years. I think we will get a lot of push. I do love our defensive line. I think that's going to be the strength of this team. But we're going to have some open holes back there. Um, so who do you start? I mean, I'm looking right now at the depth chart. I mean, I, I would probably say like Julian Love probably um, by default. But I think where he's going to be most effective is at safety. Um, you had a, you know, a linebacker, Darian Beavers, out with injury. So that's going to mean that you might need Julian Love more up top. Uh, Robinson, uh, he, you know, I, I think he was a third round pick. So I don't think he was ever projected to be a number, you know, one starting corner, but the Giants got to go with what we have. Um, so unfortunately, it's probably going to be Aaron Robinson, um, who doesn't seem to be an explosive corner. Um, but I could certainly see Holmes getting time and maybe Julian Love. I do love Xavier McKinney. I've always liked him. Uh, and Adore Jackson, I mean, he's going to have to really do a really good job at single coverage. Uh, liked him out of USC. You know, he's got to be the man. But a lot of people have said that um, Adore Jackson has stepped up and had a very good preseason and, and was – finished last year strong so i'm just as worried as you homie i there's a lot of question marks at corner and when we have a roster that was depleted to begin with with the cap issues it's just something that we're gonna have to live with unfortunately i really hope it doesn't come down to last minute drives they're just picking us apart downfield i yeah, just well, don't want to see if, that happen 
Oh, well, like you said, if the defensive line makes the push and puts the pressure on the quarterback, maybe we won't need our cornerbacks to make the big plays because yeah. you know the, the quarterbacks will probably be on their backs most of the time. We hope, but so we that's hope. that's not always going to be the case. But um, what else about this New York Giants team uh, that you that jumps out at you from preseason and? training camp that you know gives you some kind of hope uh i think i love the, the the coaching uh competency gives me confidence um seems to be a player's coach not trying to reinvent the wheel have veterans do sprints after practice you know the typical bullshit that joe judge would do you can't be bill everyone tries to be bill belichick it never works you know brian dayball seems like he's comfortable with his own skin He's not rah rah gonna get. He, he's you know very even keel guy. Like he, he he he. I think everybody knows that we have a talent depleted roster in many areas, but he's trying to get the most out of his guys. And I think we have a competent general manager as well. I think at the trade deadline, if we see a way to improve our team or to maybe get rid of an asset and, and get something in return, I think he'll do it. So I'm excited to see how we're coached up. I did not like what I saw from special teams, although Calitro had some big moments. I think overall special teams was a concern. So that's a concern for me. Uh, defensively, love the top, love the front four. If we can get pressure, that's going to disguise a lot of our back end issues, but there are issues on the back end. Um, I'm excited for Kadarius Tony. A lot of people think I'm crazy. This kid, I, I, I saw him Kadarius at Florida. Tony. I saw him at Florida a lot, and he was he would jump off the screen. NFL first round talent. He, I, I absolutely has, love his talent. I don't know about his personality. We might have a, another OBJ in our hands. Who knows? Could be, but you know what? Like OBJ is immature too, and he made big plays in Super Bowl, and they don't go on that run without him. So I, I love Tony and. I think that this coach is allowing him to be himself and be comfortable. Um, could be a cautionary tale, but the kid is just, he can make anybody miss in space. He runs great routes. He, he's got great hands. You might see him return a punt in a close game uh, if it comes down to it. He's an electrifying player, and he has not had a lot of chances to, to really show it, but I, I love Kadarius Tony. I think he's going to be a hidden gem. Uh, in this offense that's going to probably take on leading responsibilities at some point because you can't rely on Kenny Galladay. Shepard, love him, but he's lost a step and he's he's older now and he's injured a lot. And, uh, you know, the Colin Johnson injury was tough and he was an undrafted guy. And, you know, so you don't have a lot of depth at wide receiver. You like David Sills and his preseason. I, I really like him a lot. Um but, you know, Wandale Robinson, he's a gadget guy. I think he's going to do good in this offense and, uh, you know, make some splash plays for us. But I think Kadarius Tony is someone I'm looking forward to seeing because, to me, when I've seen him, he's been as talented and as gifted as any receiver in space in the league. So that would be my optimism. I'm pretty excited about Wandale Robinson as well. I think these two guys are going to be phenomenal in this New York Giants yeah. offense. Now, the, the, I mean, the – Got to get the ball. I gotta, to him. Gotta I got. Get the ball I to gotta him. confess. I wanted George Pickens because he played at Georgia. He was a five-star recruit. You know, I made a, a big play in the national championship. Off the field issues, maybe dropped his status to the second round. But he is first-round talent. He is showing out for the Steelers, and I really kind of wish we took him. But you know, it could all work out in the end. Maybe he doesn't work out and gets off the field problems. We, we see what happens with these receivers. You, you never know. Um, but it seems like Wandale is a guy that is going to be a plug-in guy that's going to get some snaps and, you know, end arounds, quick screens, and, you know, does all the right things. So, so you know, I, I'm going to trust that Shane and Dable and the talent scout that they totally cleaned house with and knows what they're doing. Um, you know, it really starts with the offensive line and, I, I'm hoping the best for Evan Neal, too, because if we can have two really young, good tackles, I mean, no matter where we go moving forward, that's that's going to be a good sign for us. So, Absolutely. Coaching staff, Brian Dable, obviously, New York Giants head coach, his first year as a, as a head coach. We've had a lot of those in the last few seasons. Yeah. What's yeah. that? McAdoo, Shermer. Jason Judge, Garrett. 
Jason Garrett. No, Jason Garrett play. was. Well, he, I'm talking about people just calling plays even. Oh, uh, uh, well, I'm I'm just specifically pointing out oh. head coaches here. So this is going to be what the Giants' fourth straight rookie head coach, never had coached the team before. Uh, yeah. I mean, what What about Brian Dable is different than the the one the ones from years past? So, Joe Judge. I mean, we're, Pat Shermer was a loser coach uh, at Cleveland. <laughs> how do you How do you bring in only the Giants are dumb enough? To bring in a guy who coached like I don't know if he was the zero and sixteen coach at the Browns, but he he, he just ne- never had any success there. No, he wasn't. So was, he comes from a face? dysfunctional franchise. That... How's that going to rub off here? It's going to rub off poorly. Okay, great. <laughs> Joe Judge, he should have taken the job at Mississippi State, but he's a special teams coordinator under Belichick, and like promises that yes, we can rebuild his team, and like we're going to do it your way, and like he doesn't have any experience talking to professional athletes like as the guy. Dable has called plays. He knows how to run an offense. He's developed a quarterback in Josh Allen and seen success. And because Joe Shane was a big part of that front office, you're getting competent GM and coach combination that have that they're in sync and they're from a winning culture that they built. So to me, that's definitely the glaring difference in a positive light. So I think that they're going to do the best they can. I, I, res- I expect a respectable season because people are also playing for their careers and jobs. Um, but you know, I, I'm excited that we have people on the same page because again, you remember you have Gettleman, then a new coach. He didn't hire him in the first place. It's like, it's, it's a different thing, you know? So, uh, yeah, we're, I, gotta, we're... <laughs> I gotta agree with you. I mean, I, I, I like, I, I wasn't too sure about this whole Brian Dables, uh, hiring, but then I wasn't sure about Joe Judge either, and look where he ended up. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like Pat yeah. Shermer because they talked him up. Oh, this big offensive coordinator guy is going to take over. He's going to make our offense score. He didn't do shit. Yeah. Joe Judge didn't do shit. He just talked the talk, didn't walk the walk. You know, and now Brian Dable, the only difference here is he comes in with a new general manager who's going to, you know, revamp this, this Giants offense, this Giants defense. He's going to put together a, a good roster in due time. It's not, obviously not going to happen overnight because yeah. it, it does take time. But you you hit the, you, you, you hit the nail right on the head. I, I think I see some special things coming from Dable. I think he's going to be successful only because of the fact that he wasn't brought in here uh, like Joe Judge was, like who the fuck was Joe Judge when they announced yeah. that Joe Judge had gotten a head coaching job for the New York Giants? That came out of left field. I don't know where the fuck that came from. I had no idea who the hell Joe Judge was. I didn't even know he yeah. was interviewed. Did you? I, I I didn't. That that was a big surprise. Um, he probably interviewed really well, and but the thing was is that Mara wanted to hear what he wanted to hear, and I think the consensus was you got to hear what you don't want to hear. And I think that's what Joe Shane probably laid out. Listen, you guys haven't won in 10 years. You've had one winning season. And, you know, that coach wanted to draft Mahomes and you said no. So, and then John Mara has been involved with what he sees as his old school philosophy in building a football team and, the attitude he wants, but the players change over generations. You need a guy that can speak the new language and adapt to the new league. And the Jason Garrett hire was the most John Mara hire of all time. A guy that has been mediocre with Dallas and he got to stay there forever. Didn't win anything. And now all of a sudden, well, he isn't experienced. So you bring him in. I mean, that's where it really came down to is, the, the Maras being involved way too handedly in these decisions. And that's where I think there's going to be the biggest difference is that he's an owner. He can support, but this is a new type of philosophy that, you know, we have to embrace. And so that's where I think that this is going. I, I don't see this being a failure. Um, you know, we'll obviously see on the field, but I just think, because of that, because of him stepping away, I think that one that can only mean you know a positive, you know, momentum. I believe there. So, 
me and you obviously have different uh, opinions on how successful the Giants will be this year. I don't think they're going to win a lot of games. Um, you think they they might? How, how many did you say? Six, I'm going to say in between in between six and seven, I believe. I'm right, looking so, at their schedule. We can play that game. That's always fun. Over under a seven, I believe. I think uh, Vegas has them as over under seven. What do you think that, you know, are you going over or are you going under seven? Oh, man. I, I, I try not to wager on the Giants. Um, if you were to take a guess, let's we're not wagering. Oh, we're man. just <laughs> – just looking down, up and down the schedule. I'm looking at the schedule right now, and okay, you know, there's you got you got obviously Tennessee the Titans, Titans in week one. Tennessee Titans week one. You know, I'm gonna the glass. I think the Giants are gonna be competitive in that game. Um, Tennessee does not have an overwhelming home field advantage. They play in Nashville. It's a destination town. It's still summer. There's still a lot of Giants fans there, and a lot of New Yorkers moved to Tennessee pandemic and everything else so they got a shot and ryan Tannehill is by no means aaron Rodgers or you know uh tom brady or john josh allen or mahomes so they don't have to worry about a quarterback that's going to pick them apart and be something to deal with well coached good defense not great have underachieved the last few years has their window closed i think the giants are going to be very competitive here don't know if they win I can't say with certainty they win. So I'm going to give them a loss there. But the Panthers at home, they got to be feasting at that game. The Panthers are one of the worst-rated football teams, brand-new quarterback, and a coach that I don't think is well – I don't think Matt Rule has the command of that room. And to think that Matt Rule was almost the New York Giants head coach – he coached at Bailey. He coached. You can't coach Big Twelve football. It's not SEC football. It's not at the same level. Um, he was well loved in Bailey. Did a great job. But you know, again, he he has Sam Darnold. He has no quarterback either. I think Baker Mayfield is going to be okay this year. They just don't have a talent. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is always hurt. Their defense is okay. The Giants. Uh, they might be in a position at home. To, to, to go in and win that game. So I think the, I'm going to give the Giants the Panthers. And if the Giants are one and one uh, going at home, they have another, they have two more home games after that. They got the Cowboys and the Bears. On a, on a night game, you, you got to think that Dallas is going to probably pull that out. Although the Giants have played the Cowboys tough, lost some heartbreaking games in the recent past. Probably give the nod to Dallas there, but then you have another home game against Chicago. Chicago is a depleted team all around, so I can see two and two realistically. The Panthers and the Bears do not have a coach and quarterback combination you can trust on the road. Um, the Giants in those games, depending on how the first game goes, they might be a favorite in those games. So then you got the Packers and Ravens, so you could lose those two, um, possibly. Then you got the Jaguars and Seahawks and Texans. I mean, you can win one of those next three games, you figure. And then you got the, the Lions. You got after the Packers and Ravens, which is going to be two very difficult games, and Wink is going against his former team there. And, again, you got a better quarterback. Baltimore, you got Lamar. You got Aaron Rodgers. That's the biggest advantage for us. So you figure two and four. But then you have Geno Smith, Davis Mills, Jared Goff, Trevor Lawrence, who is a second-year guy with a, another new head coach, uh, Doug Peterson, who is a very good coach, and I think that the Jaguars can actually be pretty good. So they and they, you know, Jacksonville is not a big home field advantage, but they might take us. But we should split those games. I think we should beat the Texans and the Seahawks, the Lions. Maybe they're better. So I could see the Giants winning four of those first few games. And then you got to figure toward the end. I mean, do they not win a game the rest of the season from November 24th on? I, I just don't see they don't win any. I mean, heads would roll. The pay, it would be crazy. I don't know. I, I don't see that unless, again, Jones gets hurt. So then you have Cowboys. You essentially have the, the boys, 
the skins, Eagles. Well, you got four. You got four straight division games: weeks yeah. 12, 13, 14, and. And 15. then you have three after as well. Like after the Vikings, you have two more. Or no, you have the Colts. The Colts. There's no chance the Giants are beating the Colts. Running game is too good. I love Matt Ryan going to the Colts. I think, I, I think the Colts are a very serious playoff team because they have a, a quarterback that's way better than Wentz, the best running back in football, elite defense, elite offensive line, good coach. The Eagles, look, I mean, they got Jalen Hurts. Um, Giants picked off Jalen Hurts last year and had success, but Jalen Hurts has a better roster, better receivers, better offensive line, better defense. They're loaded. You know, that they are ready to go on a very big year but it's all dependent on Jalen Hurts, who's a smaller quarterback who is not a great thrower of the football. Will the Giants be able to get to him? You don't love the skins. I mean, they're not good. I mean, Carson Wentz, uh, you know, you don't have a good quarterback-coach combination. I do like Ron Rivera. They do have some elite defenders. Chase Young going to come back from injury. But they haven't had a galvanizing quarterback to lead that room, so – you know, even the Vikings, I mean, you know, like, other than Aaron Rodgers and Lamar Jackson, they don't face any top line quarterbacks, really. Dak Prescott is, like, in my opinion, 13th. So if you, you know, Kirk Cousins at home, I mean, Vikings are a very good team. They're good year in and year out. So they're, they're going to probably give us a hard time. But to say so we can't Justin, win two Justin of those Fields, games. Was Justin Fields named the, the um, starting quarterback in Chicago? Yes. So he's going to be the starting QB, but he's got no okay. wide receiver. Who's the starter awesome. in Philadelphia? What the hell is his name again? J- Jalen Hurts. Okay. They're talking yeah. about these two guys if they're the next upcoming superstars. No way. What, what, am, what, am I missing something, or are these guys uh, legitimately, um, legitimately going to be superstars? In these offenses. I, I, I love Justin Fields coming out of college, uh, but this is in Ohio State where you got five yeah, stars. This, all this, is, the this isn't college. This is, this is the NFL. I, they're talking he got about killed, Justin Fields got killed last year, uh, sacked a, a bunch, really disheartening. I don't, they have a new coach as well. I mean, because so anytime you have a new coach, young quarterback, kind of unproven, it, it's, it gives opportunities schematically to win. I mean, the Jaguars. I mean, you, you know, Urban Meyer left that place a mess, but just you got Lawrence. They might pick us off. I haven't beaten us, but you know, the Eagles. You know, everyone's ex- the Eagles have the best roster in the comp in our division by far. I think defensively, offensively, they're they're loaded everywhere. But that's contingent on Jalen Hurts. I mean, he he, he they're going to run the football a lot, but can they come from behind and close games? You know, are, are the Giants able to get leads against these teams? I don't know. I mean. The Commanders, I mean, they're all, they're always kind of stuck in their own way. Dallas is overrated. Uh, you know, they're going to play us tough, but I don't think they respect that coach. There's there's opportunities to win six games on the schedule. Um, I, I don't think I could go over seven, but I could see them hitting seven or just missing it. Um. You know, some people have hot takes and say they can pick off ten games. I, t- Daniel Jones, you can't bank ten wins on. He just uh, he turns it over too much. Um, you know, I think he's going to have a better year, but the schedule is the easiest in the league. You can win six. I I, I see no reason why. You know, Panthers, Bears, Seahawks, Texans. Even the Lions, um, and even if they go one and five in the division, which is bad, they still get six. So I, I can see. I think six is like a safe number. What about you? What are, what are your thoughts? I kind of went on there for a little bit, but uh, that's tough, man. I'm trying to find that seven, that seventh win. I just don't see it. It all again, Jamie. It, it all depends on how well and how healthy they stay. It all depends on Daniel Jones, that offensive line, Saquon yeah. Barkley. Are the receivers say, uh, um, staying healthy? Is this defense going to be solid? I mean, especially up front, will it, you know that defensive line put enough pressure on the quarterback to yeah. help the defensive backs, you know, not give up the big play? That's that's where the Giants are probably going to get hurt most this year. Is is the long game? Yeah. Uh, a lot of teams are going to yeah. be throwing right over. You know everybody's heads, and they're, they're probably Dallas worries there's, me. There's a, there's a lot of yeah. talented wide receivers in his division. 
there is Dallas worries me with throwing it over the top. If Hertz can scramble out of the pocket, throw it over someone as that worries me. We're not going to have a chance against the Ravens or Packers. If the Jags, Giants can split, uh, uh, if the Giants can split their season series against the Eagles and the Commanders, I think they have a good chance of finishing with seven wins. I, I like I, their I, chances to split with the Cowboys more than the Eagles, believe it or not. I think really? the Eagles are just better than us. We beat them last year, but I think the way that they're structured, I, they're going to have to make so many tackles in the run game. I just don't think we can get a lead on the Eagles' defense. Cowboys' defense, other than Micah Parsons, who's elite, is very suspect. Giants have to be in a position to get a lead, hold a lead. And we have the pass rushers, although young, to maybe do some damage. We're not going to get a lead against the Packers. Um, the Titans scare me with their running game controlling the clock, not letting us get enough opportunities. Good defense. Dallas, you know, Prescott can get hot. He's inconsistent, but he can get hot and just torch us up for 40. I mean, he really can. Um, so in the division, you know, the Eagles, the, I don't know. I mean, I don't think split. I, I think we have to certainly split with the commanders. I think that's where we're going to get our win. We could go one and five in the division and still get six wins, but – you know, you're, you're, you're asking a lot and, and, uh, at, you know, at the end of the games, we're going to have to make stops and the, you know, we let up the most points in football in the final two minutes and the, or no, the, the two minutes before half, I think we got outscored and it, it, you got to look up the statistic. It's an exorbitant amount. It, it was like not even heard of. Uh, when, the amount when you, we got outscored. When, when when you look at some of the teams the Giants are going to be playing this year, and we've spoken about this on prior podcasts, last year, uh, what, what did they average last year? I think they averaged less points per game last year than they did the year before in year one like under Joe Judge. I think it was like 17 or 18 points, yeah. Okay. Um, no, yeah. actually it was far less. I think it was last year, I think it was 15, close Oof. to 16. The year before that, I think it was 16, they have 17. not cracked over 30 points in years. I think it was only one time we played. I think they were they're still the Redskins. Saquon went off at a great game. That was like three years ago. They haven't right. cracked 30 points, dude. Yep. Problem. They, got it. They, they have to score 20-plus games on a consistent basis if they yeah. want to if they want to put W's in, but, you know, but, in the but, but the Giants are playing against teams that aren't going to put up points either. Like – the Panthers, the Bears, Seahawks, Texans, Lions, they're not going to put up a lot of points. Washington's not going to put up a lot. So the other teams will. Vikings are going to score. They have a good they're, – they're, they're, you know, they're um, – they're The Vikings, the Packers. I think the Lions have a pretty good offense. I think I think they can score points. The the, the Ravens are going to score points. Yeah, I think sure. the Titans Jags, with Derek – Derek Henry is going to run all over the house. Yeah, but they don't – so I, I think – they, to me, have an issue with their quarterback because their quarterback has come up small in big moments. And I think there's some doubt in that organization about him. And they're going to be on a lot of pressure this year to perform. And that pressure might get to them. So the Giants will keep the first game, I believe, on Sunday competitive. I think the spread is like four points or something. I think the Giants are going to keep this close, dude. I, I, I think the Giants are going to play an ugly game, go all out. They might lose a close one on a late field goal, maybe a lucky you know way to lose for them. But um, I think the Giants are going to keep it pretty close. Um, you know, I think if the Giants can get positive momentum from that game, they're going to go in and beat the Panthers. Well, the, um, line, the line's up to five and a half now. Five and a half. So a lot of people are probably betting on Tennessee. Here's what I got to say. Like, you know, you're playing outdoors. Um, I don't see any factor there. I don't see a big home field edge. It's not Arrowhead Stadium. It's not like you're playing, you know, the game at Seattle, although it is the Seahawks, they're not very good. That that field, that home field is going to be a problem, especially on the defensive side of the ball. But I don't see a big home field advantage for Tennessee. Quarterback is suspect, although accomplished. And the Giants are going to have a lot of fans in that building. So I don't see a five-and-a-half point spread. I, I really think the Giants are going to keep it close. They could lose by a field goal. Not saying they're going to win, but I think they're going to keep it pretty close. 
And if they can build any momentum, I think they'll take care of Carolina. Um, and then, you know, it's going to be mayhem, you know, against the Cowboys. And, you know, we'll, we'll play our cards. But I think the Bears, uh, you know, I think there's too much pride with this group, you know, and I, I believe that if the Giants can go two and two the first four games, I think I'd be happy. One and three is – I don't think we can go 0 and 4. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, I don't see it happening. I don't. I don't see the 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 gauntlet here. The Packers, Ravens, and Jags are going to be tough. And then then you got another stretch where it's like Seahawks, Texans, Lions. You know, you got to take your games that you can take. I, I think the Giants are a little bit better than some of those teams. Um, could be wrong. You never know. Do you wonder if Joe Shane, Brian Dable might throw some games to try to get a top pick in a draft? No, I, 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 I don't, I don't believe that. I mean, you don't think that? Goes I don't think on? Joe, I don't think Joe, I don't think Jones. I mean, it definitely happens. I mean, I, I know that there's been stories that, that that happens. Daniel Jones doesn't strike me as a person that would do that. Neither does Saquon. Um. I don't think that if the Giants are – listen, this division is not great, and there's an expanded playoff. The Giants, look, I mean, if the Giants are four and six, are they going to start tanking? No. I mean, if they're, you know, uh, if they're like two and ten, I mean, you know, that's, that's a little bit different than you might want to, you know. If Daniel Jones is hurt week one and you have Tyrod Taylor, well, yeah, I mean, you're pretty much your season's over. Um, Jones stays healthy. I think he's going to be, you know, okay. I mean, he's not going to win you any Super Bowl, but he's going to be he's going to be worth a couple of these games. I, I don't, I don't, I don't see the Giants losing to to, to a lot of teams on the schedule. Um, yeah, I, I just think this our defense up front is going to cause some problems, and we're not playing against world beating quarterbacks. I mean, other than Aaron Rodgers and Lamar Jackson, I mean, there's really I mean, Dak Prescott, I mean, he's good. He's not great. Uh, Tannehill is not great. And you don't really love any of the other quarterbacks who you're playing against. So Jared Goff, you're not really scared of him. And Kirk Cousins, you know, he's going he's gonna to put up some points. But could be wishful thinking. But I, I, we should have six wins here, I, I really believe. We're playing the Packers also in London, too. So, I mean, that's another thing that. Maybe Aaron oh, Rodgers. Does that, does that mean I got to like get playing. up at nine o'clock in the morning? Sure does. I'll probably. Oh. My son's probably got a hockey game at that time as well. But uh, the Giants lucked out. They have an extra home game, and so they don't play that many real road games. The schedule could not be set up more for them to get the over. I just don't know if they actually will. I don't think they get over seven. I, no, I don't if, if anything, you know. You might have convinced me maybe six. I don't think they go over. So I don't think they get seven or over seven. Yeah, we I think, overshot I think six. way too many times on these shows to get caught again. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last year, I think our prediction was what? Seven, eight, nine wins last year? Oh, we year thought that we were going 500 and battling <laughs> we were, for spot. We thought we were going to the me? Super Bowl, Jamie. What are you talking Dude, about? Oh, my God. <laughs> If this, this, and this happens, bro, it's we've just been misled, dude, for, for too long. All right, so Daniel Jones over on the 3,550 yards. Because we're going to be behind late in some of these games and playing catch-up, because of some of the garbage time yards we will have to accumulate, I think he's going to be over. Wow. I would have said under. Yeah, I, I agree with your logic, but here's where I'm thinking, right? I mean, we're going to be involved in teams where the Jaguars could run up on us if, if Trevor Lawrence gets hot and they figure that situation out. Uh, the Ravens are going to probably have a 20-point lead on us. We might have to catch up there. Packers going to have to come back there. I'm talking about the guard. I'm talking about like the useless yards that really don't mean much. Giants might have a lot of those games if the Eagles. When we go into Philly, you don't, I mean, the last game of the season, I mean, unless they rest their starters, it doesn't mean anything. The Vikings are going to be a problem. going to have to throw a lot. Colts. And, I mean, there's going to be some games where we're behind. We're going to have to throw the ball. So because of that, 
17 games on the schedule, an extra game, as long as if Jones is healthy, then I think he's going to be over. But, you know, that would – we could put a bet on that, but he has to play a certain amount of games to qualify. And that's going to be we my next over-under. Over-under 13 games. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. I'm going to – oh, man. I was thinking like 14 games. Like you spit out that number. I was, I was like, he's got to miss. See, the fucked up part is we need him to stay on the field for 17 games. We can't have him on the field for 13. No. Because those four that he may or may not miss are probably he's missed games, games every year. He, yeah. So Eli Manning didn't miss a game his whole career. Yep. When it seemed like, how is that possible? And Jones will just pull a hamstring and he'll be out for a game. Or twist an ankle. Like, there's always something going on with him. I gotta say under. Gotta say under. Um, under thirteen. So I, I guess I I couldn't I couldn't I now I can't go over the thirty five hundred. But I, that's all. That's only based on if he's healthy for the fourteen games. So if he if he goes fourteen games, he's definitely going over the yardage. But I don't think he's gonna make thirteen games. He just gets he gets dinged up too much. If he goes fifteen games, I'd be very surprised. I would say I'd say thirteen, possibly fourteen. I I would love to see him go all seventeen, but you know, fifteen has to be a key number for him. He can't miss more than fifteen games. Plays too recklessly, takes the hits. good thing. The the good thing. Well, I'm sorry to cut you off, but the Not good thing good. about this year, as opposed to the last two years is now you actually have a capable backup quarterback in Tyrod yeah. Taylor who can come in and, you know. That's why I believe we can win games, too, because he's a competent back. He's going to make a pick six every now and then, but he's also going to put some points up for you. Um, and he's a savvy veteran. So he, he, last year, what he, you didn't have a backup quarterback. I mean, I'm sorry, but, but Jake Fromm and Tan, it doesn't count as his backup quarterback. So hmm. or, uh, that tall guy, Mike Glennon, are you kidding me? Colt McCoy, yeah, Colt McCoy, I and mean, he I'm actually. I'm surprised. Game for us in I'm actually. That one I'm, well, that one game. That was. Um, I'm surprised that Arizona brought him back. They they resigned him as their backup. I. Well, they gave their whole farm away to Kyler Murray, and that's going to be a bit. Listen, that draft. I know we got killed for that um, draft, but there's really nobody in that draft that's really any good. I mean, Gardner Minshew. I mean, he's not any good. He was second round, and like Kyler Murray. I mean. I don't think Arizona is winning with Kyler Murray as, as dynamic as they can be. You need a guy that can sling the rock. And, and you know, he's not Joe Burrow. He's not Justin Herbert. He's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not DeAndre, Lamar Jackson. He's not. DeAndre Hopkins is sitting out his first 11 games for. Because is it of the six suspension. games or is it 11? No, 11 was Deshaun well, heard... Watson. Oh, you're talking about Deshaun Watson, right? No, no, no. Oh, I, thought, I think I thought it was. I think the I think DeAndre Hopkins is a oh, sixteen you know what? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. The Sean Watson's eleven. That's yeah. correct. Yep. You're right. And I'm sorry. He's a he's a hell of a player. Um, who knows if he wants to be there? They got a tough division too. You know, you got to deal with San Fran. Uh, the NFC, to be honest with you, is wide open. I mean, other than the Rams, Green Bay is still going to be there. The Bucks. There's really no other sure team you can count on. It's going to get in. Um, the AFC is loaded. I mean, they, 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 every team that gets in in the AFC is going to be a really good team. Um, there's just too many good quarterbacks in that in that conference. It, it, that is insane to me. If I was a who, I'm who besides Matt the Bills? Right who, who, well, hold on a second. Hold on. Who besides the Bills is good enough to make the playoffs in the AFC East? Uh, in the AFC East, nobody. But if you go to the AFC West, you got me on the AFC East. But AFC West, all four can make it. Raiders. Oh, I know. I thought. I know. I thought you said there there'd be multiple not, teams not in the AFC East. Not specifically. Not specifically the East. Um, although Miami, they spent a lot of money. They brought in a million people. Uh, Tyreek Hill and <laughs> um, you know everybody else. And Tua, I never liked him out of college. Although he did have a great career. Just takes too long to deliver the ball. Awkward delivery. Doesn't throw deep enough. Um, but you know, look at the AFC West: Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson now, and Derek Carr. Who you know, if Derek Carr was in the NFC East, he'd be the second best quarterback. So, well, he's um, got Devontae Adams now. He's got Tay Adams. They play together at Fresno Come on State. Now. Um, uh, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the uh, the Vegas, the Las Vegas uh, Raiders are yeah Super Bowl contenders. 
because they got uh, Devonte Adams. I don't. I, I I still think people are underestimating the Chiefs. I know Tyreek Hill is big, but they bring in Marquez Valdez Scantling. They bring in Juju Smith Schuster, who mm-hmm. is you know a very experienced physical receiver. They got talented backs. They got Andy Reid calling plays. They got Patrick Mahomes. So you can't count them out. And Russell Wilson, he's going to have a a loaded team as well, and I respect him. But Mahomes is younger. He's more dynamic. He's in his prime. Mahomes, the Chiefs are, are not getting as much love. The, the Chargers with Herbert are an interesting team. Everyone always picks them, but they're I don't love their coach. Goes for it on fourth down every play. Come on, let's chill with that. Like just just let the game breathe. I, I don't know why he has to go for it on fourth down. He lost the game because of it. Just kick the field goal. You know, it's that shit scares me. Uh, that division is is just insanely good. Yeah, w- without a doubt, there's a lot of talented teams in the NFL. Um, that AFC West does. <laughs> and then and then you still got Joe Burrow, and um, you know when Deshaun Watson gets back. He'll be on the Browns. They're going to be good. Um, the Steelers have a first-round pick they really like, and they're going to have a good roster. And you know, the Ravens got Lamar Jackson. I mean, there and there's still other teams out there too. So there, NFC is made for the taking. Some team in the NFC is going to come in and, and do better. I don't know who that team's going to be. You have a team in mind that you think is going to have a surprising year uh, in any of the conferences? No, right off the bat, I I don't. To be honest with you, I I've been concentrating so much on the NFC East. I really haven't thought about much of uh, the rest of yeah. the league. I, I mean, I I agree with you. I like the uh, AFC West. That's 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 a, a tremendous division. So much talent yeah, over there. The so quarterbacks good. are just really really good. You know, you got some pretty good defenses as well. Uh, if there's one particular team in each league that I think might surprise people. Um, I I don't know. I really can't think of any. I think the Colts. They. I mean. I think I the, like Colts, the Colts. Though. I think the, I I think you got to keep an eye on the Colts, even though you know Matt Ryan's kind of on, you know on the older side. Yeah, but I I think they got themselves a, a pretty good quarterback to you know to lead that yep. offense. Um, Division's not that hard, and they're they they have they they're loaded everywhere. Well coached. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're Jonathan as good Taylor as is a tremendous running back. He's a tremendous running back talent. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean you got to keep an eye on the Colts. Uh, I I think they're the ones I would keep an eye on over the other teams because the other teams you know they're good you know they're going to compete you know they're going to be good but yeah. with matt ryan leading the offense you know you kind of like iffy about it but at the same time you're like you know this team could be really really good um in the afc east i don't know keep an eye on new england i think new england is starting to put it together and of course they got one of the best coaches in the league and bill belichick the Jets, I have no faith in the Jets. I, I you know, I, I, I might have some bias here because I'm a New York Giants fan, but they just can't get shit right. They just can't get no. it right. They no, just can't. Okay. No matter who who's leading the way in, in the front office over there, Joe Douglas, uh, Douglas is, I mean, okay, but Zach Wilson's hurt all the time. Yeah, I mean, his first two seasons he's been hurt, I don't know, a gajillion times. Every time he touches the ball. Yeah. I mean, as confident as this kid is, and he's very confident. He's a very fucking confident kid. If you ever listen to him, uh, he thinks yeah, he's, he's the shit of the world. He thinks his shit <laughs> don't stink. Yeah. Um, you know, be very wary of players like that. I don't. I don't like players like that, especially yeah, the ones either. that you know come in the league and are overly confident. But like I said, the Jets just haven't gotten it right. Miami might be a team that you might keep an eye on in the East. Like you said, they spent a lot of money. I, I just don't have any confidence at all in in Tonga Vailoa. New coach too. Uh, he's uh, they're saying a lot of much. good things about this, this this guy. He's a very young coach. He's very approachable. He's very player friendly. He's he's a comedian from what I hear. He makes everybody yeah. laugh. Whoop de fucking do. It's what you do on the field is what counts. Forget how many smiles you can put on people's faces. That yeah. I don't really give a shit about. Um, God, I, I think. The 49ers might be Rams... interesting out, out west uh, in the NFC. Um, 
Trey I Lance. Don't, I don't like Trey Lance. I really don't. Got to see him he, play. I, I, he, he's very. He's a really elite athlete. He's pretty unbelievable. Um, and Kyle Shanahan does a lot with very little. And, and they have a loaded defense. Um, tough place to play. They're a. They're a. They beat, went on the road. They beat Dallas last year. You know, I took them money line, and I you know won a good chunk of change there. I, I love the 49ers, How they're built. So uh, you know, new quarterback is going to have his lumps, but they're going to be really good. Saints loaded roster, no real quarterback. There's a lot of those teams in the league that you just don't know what you're going to get. Eagles, they could easily win 12 games. I mean, their roster is just better than a lot of rosters, and you play a lot of weak teams. You know, if they can run the football with Hertz and Miles Sanders, get a lead. They got tremendous defense, pass rush. They got Jordan Davis out of Georgia, who's a monster. Great secondary, Darius Slay, Bradbury. They're not gonna. They're gonna have a lead in games, and they're gonna pull games out. They're gonna. They're gonna be a very tough team. I think the Eagles are winning the NFC East. I think they're the best team. I think Dallas takes a step back. Um, well, that's that's always expected because Dallas. I, I yeah. mean, Every how many times. How many times when they come out with the predictions that Dallas Cowboys are going to win the division, they're going to go to the Super Bowl, they haven't been there in fucking years. Yeah. Let it go. Stop predicting Dallas is going to win it all because they're just yeah, not going to do it's, it. It's, they, they get a lot they, of hype. They just they don't know how to finish. Hype. They just no. don't know how to finish. And they don't have a coach that is in tune with the modern NFL. I think he fell out of favor in Green Bay. So because Sean Payton's out, Saints, uh, they give the Bucks fits, but I don't know what, what to get from them. The Eagles are scare are, look really scary. They can be really good. I do like the 49ers. I think they're going to be a team a lot of people bet on. Um, I think the Bengals are as good as anybody. I mean, people don't really talk much about the Bengals, but that kid, Joe Burrow, is special. And he outplayed Patrick Mahomes in the championship, the NFC, AFC championship. So, And he played good in the Super Bowl, too. So I don't think there's going to be much of a downturn there. Um you know, I, I think there's the, the, the NFC is definitely the weaker division. But I, a team I like in the AFC is the Jags. Um, they got our old friend Evan Engram, uh, you know, our favorite tight end, you know. Uh, How long Trevor is Lawrence stay on the field? overshadowed Urban Meyer, destroyed that culture. But Doug Peterson, Super Bowl winning coach, he won with Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. I mean, he won with nothing. So to me, he's a guy that's going to get a lot out of them. And Trevor Lawrence, it's not like all of a sudden he doesn't know how to play. He, he, he is the that dude. They upgraded a lot of positions, so I think they can make a little bit of noise and win some games. And we all know the usual suspects. We know who else is going to be there at the end of the at the end of the day. But just excited for this thing to get kicked off, you know? Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be another. Grind. Uneventful it's season. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, it definitely is. I no doubt about it, Jamie. It, it, it's 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 one of the, it's one of those things where you just got to believe in a process and just um, you know and and let it let the process take its course. I will. Uh, I say think, I'm I think it, optimistic. I am optimistic. Week more optimistic. Week one than probably other people are, based on what we talked about. So I, it's not impossible that we can't go in there and win the game. No. I, I mean, nothing's impossible. I, yeah. Listen, if if Derrick Henry breaks his leg on the first play of the game, uh, we're hoping he doesn't. I'm just saying. No, we don't. <laughs> I'm just saying it, it's a possibility the Giants might win that game. But other than that, I don't see it. Um, Kafka, offensive coordinator, Dable's announced that he's going to be, play, you know, do the play calling. Yeah. Well, how do you yeah. feel about that? I mean, he's coming from another winning culture in in Kansas City. He learned from Andy Reid and his tendencies about when to call plays. And I'm expecting – it's interesting because a lot of – like Joe Judge had no expertise in anything and Shermer was supposed to be offensive line. Like we actually have guys that – like Brian Dable knows how to call plays and they're going to, you know, I think – have a situation where if we have to go on a drive in a certain part of the game or change things up, I think they'll be on the same page and they'll work with each other. Um, so I do like as, that. As dynamic. it should be. Cause, yeah. cause obviously if something is we didn't not have working that and with that, Joe judge, we didn't no. have that. I, I just feel Joe, that oh my God, so I, I just think that, I just think the head coach needs to 
manage the team. Yeah. Let his defensive coordinator do his part. Let the offensive coordinator do his part. If obviously things aren't going well and, you know, he gets on the horn and says, hey, listen, uh, we need to make a change here. Yeah, let's, he will. Let's, he will. you know, I, I'm sure he's going to do that. There's no doubt about it. But I, I like the idea of Dable just running, managing the team, you know, and, you know, keeping a close eye on what's going on. But I, I think this is a good idea that Kafka is going to get the play calling. I, I think it's really – it's unwanted pressure for Dable, for the head coach. Yeah. We've seen it in the past with Shermer, McAdoo. We've seen it with uh, with Judge. We've seen it with so many coaches to, who've come in, first-year coaches, and want to do everything. Like, they want to micromanage the yeah. entire game. And it's just not going to work. And that's why they are no longer head coaches in this league. So, I like that idea. Um, all right. What else do we have before we go, Joe? Uh, I wanted Jamie? to ask you, um, the most valuable players on offense and defense at the end of the year, you had to put money on it for the Giants. Who is going to be the most important and they perform the best at their position, offensive well, defense. Uh, again, barring injury, I think Saquon Barkley should be the offensive player of the year for the New York Giants, with hands down, no doubt about it. Um, defensively, um, you know, it, it's good. It's going to be a toss up. Uh, Ojulari had a good year last year. I think Thibodeau is going to have a good year this year. Uh, but I, I, the guy I'm looking at is Xavier McKinley. I like that um, pick a lot. He, he's he's going to do a lot of different things for this Giants defense. He's going to rush the quarterback. He's going to make some big plays down the field. He's going to do it all. I mean, yep. when, when the Giants looked at him and drafted him, they saw a safety slash linebacker. And he has experience doing both. So. Yep. He can definitely play in a box, or he could definitely play back and make big plays on defense. Those are the two guys I think we're going to be looking at. But if things aren't going well, my next question to you, Jamie, is trade deadline. Who do you see moving if the Giants aren't doing well? I think teams are going to be interested in Saquon. Uh, a team like Buffalo, Joe Shane knows them. I throw them a bone. You know, they're not going to fleece their old team. I'm not expecting a first-round pick in return. Nobody should. But if you can get, like, a second-round pick, I think they got to pull the trigger. With the right price, I think teams will be interested in Barkley. Now, if Barkley goes on a tear and has a great year, yeah, I mean, I think he could be flipped at the deadline. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't know. It depends on how bad. Like, if we're out of contention and it's really bad, I think teams will inquire about Dory, Dory Jackson maybe, but I think he's still under a contract. It's a bigger contract, but he does have a veteran experience. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you. Nobody's going to want anybody else, really. I mean, Gall I mean, there's no real – You can't move Galladay. Galladay is an unmovable and, contract. There's just yeah. no way unless the Giants eat up some of that contract and they're just not going to be able to do that. Yeah, Dexter it's Lawrence just... might get a few interests too, but I think they like they, they really like him. He was voted uh, you know, one of the captains, I believe. So uh, – yeah, I think I think we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I I do think Joe Shane is is not going to be afraid to like pull the trigger, um, but I don't think there's going to be any. I, I wouldn't if I had to guess yes or no, there will be deadline moves. I'm going to say no that there will be deadline. I, I don't think they will. So what's who's um, your who's your offensive MVP and defense? My MVP? offensive MVP prediction is going to be Andrew Thomas. Um, been improving steadily every year. Georgia Bulldog. I'm sticking with him. I think he has the potential to be a Pro Bowl player for us at left tackle. Um, so I'm hoping for good health there, knock on wood. And defensively, I'm going to go with Kayvon Thibodeau, rookie. But I see a special – the way that he's on – the way the guys are around him on the sideline is something that I've never seen with a giant rookie in a long time. I mean, when he had that injury scare, I mean, he was running the sideline. He is a dog. He is that lead dog. So I think even though he's a rookie, he might be our most valuable defensive player by years out. So those are my two guys. Very nice. I like those picks. Love them. 
Let's do All it. All right. Any uh, last words, Jamie? I think we, we got to go? do this again next week. We got to get on the horn again, and hopefully we're discussing a 24 to 20 victory with Daniel Jones throwing three touchdowns, one interception. Actually, no, two touchdowns, one interception. Saquon gets a running touchdown. And I'm gonna say a interception by Julian Love. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to manifest right now. 24-20, gutsy, ugly win, get it done. We blocked their last drive on an incomplete pass or something. I'm hoping 24-20 Giants week one. That's what I'm hoping for next week. What do you say? If we if we win, I don't think we're gonna win, but if we if we win, what do you what what would you uh if the, if the offense is is running on all cylinders and everyone's healthy and everyone stays on the field and the offensive line does its part, I can see Daniel Jones throwing for 250 yards and two touchdowns. I it's can see him throwing an interception in there. And I yep. can definitely see Saquon Barkley because this is going to be key against the Titans because Derrick Henry is going to be running all over the field, keeping yep. their offense off the field. So that means that Saquon Barkley is going to have to take on a lot of the load to keep the Titans' offense off the field. I can see him running for 100 yards plus, possibly a touchdown, and I could see the Giants sneak away with the win here, but it'll probably be a one-point one, uh, one point win. Yeah, I, I would say 30% chance to win, definitely not zero. Uh, but you know what? Like, you, you got to just you gotta turn it up. And listen, we're, our text messages will be firing on Sunday. Got my son's hockey tournament. Got a wedding to go to. I'm going to be ready to go. Probably order myself a pie. Well, it's a 425 game. I could have sworn it was a 1 o'clock game. But no, nah, it's 425, I, which is perfect, uh, which is absolutely perfect for me because uh, we need I – I, of course, I don't have the schedule pulled up. All right, well, are you going to be around Sunday? Are you going to be around to do Sunday, a post game? I should be around to do a post game because uh, I'm getting back from Boston at around probably noon ish. So I'm going to probably catch the one o'clock window, uh, you know, probably sit on the couch, fall in for a little bit, get ready to go. And I'm going to be just a nervous wreck. I like, guess 425. And then after the game, after we text everything that's happening, we got to get on. If there's a win, got to get on. Uh, I think we should be able to do a post game. Don't want to promise anything, but uh, we should definitely talk in prayer because that would be pretty sick. All right, sounds good, Jamie. So if anything, I'll see you Sunday. I will All see right, you. If anything, I'll see you Sunday. We'll be we'll be getting after it. Thank you very much for being on with me, and I uh, appreciate your time, brother. Till yeah, the next bad, time, man. let's go Giants. Peace let's out. Do it.